obstructing Michael. DeFerrin came in dead stiff. There was damage. We could see suspension problems right front. He gets the green light on 12.3 seconds. There's a job I want, standing out on the right front of a car with all the cars in the field making the pit stop. Pappas is in. Reset your fuel. Jan. He has reset his fuel, and they're not expecting to make any changes, but he wants a drink of water. At the same time, same time, you get him in the gear. Get it up. speed. Juan Montoya. You're clear. You're clear. Oriel Servia comes in as well. Come with me. Don't go past me. Back in almost gets loose on Servia. Cristiano DeMont has spent a little, little extra time. Look at this. Damata, who was running so well, is suddenly climbing out of the car as they hose it down. Gary. Just arriving from the Newman Hospital, or the target pit where Montoya made his stop, and they're scrambling to get Cristiano out of there. A lot of water dumped around the cockpit, so something was hot for a moment. Now he comes out, appears to be okay. Don't know what happened yet. We'll try to find out. Well, you can see some scorching on the back of his driver's suit. And the big problem with methanol is you can't see when it's burning. <laughs> gives us a thumbs up. No, I'm okay. Everything's fine. <laughs> you can see him stretch the fuel and vent hose out. Obviously, he's got a hot clutch. It's starting gauge pulled forward. They're going back to restart it. Then they jump back from the car. Obviously, they had a surface fire on the bodywork. lead of the race just stopped and is now coming back up to speed so on that round to stop some confusion up and down the pit road the amazing thing is that to me at least is that Christian Fittipaldi still stood in six after that contact that took Kenny Breck out of the race and, and despite the fact that Fittipaldi has some pretty severe damage on the right side of the race car lead changes record of course 63 31 today after 29 last year Michigan also always gives us a good race those are official at the line lead changes Andretti Montoya Castro Nevis Pappas the top four and they're all right together so as Michael Andretti is going to look for a third win at the Michigan 500, it is possible today the engine battle is still Ford, Honda, and Toyota. This is a weird beat. a minute range. They hydrate like crazy because we're used to having cockpit temperatures in the 130 to 140 degree range. Dehydration is your number one enemy. Well, it's cool today. It's only 70 degrees. We've got the slight overcast. Elio Castroneves has called in and said that he needs to find a restroom fast because he's a little overhydrated and he still has a long ways to go. That's Alex Tagliani that darted out alongside of Elio Castroneves and slides into second place and comes back to try to do battle with the leader, Michael Andretti. Castroneves' teammate, Phil DeFerrin, just came in and climbed out of the car. We'll try to get him as Alex Tagliani takes the lead of the Michigan 500 out of the race and maybe Gary Gerald you can now clear up some of the confusion of the stop is Cristiano D'Amato. Cristiano can you tell us what happened and what led to all that confusion that put you out? Uh, when Barrett, my crew chief, he moved away to go to the front wing. It was basically this, the same movement that we organized that was for me to go. So I thought it was for me to go is misunderstanding uh, our fault in fixing for the next race because we gave away a couple of points that were going to be important. Now, and, and I understand the crew member, is, he's okay. Everything, everybody's all right. Nobody was hurt here. No, no, that, at least that's, that's good from everything bad that happened here today. The good thing is everybody is fine. We appreciate that. Thank you, Cristiano. Michelle Jourdain, Jr., one of the Mercedes-powered cars in the pits. The team is Bentonhausen Motorsports. Our owner, Tony Bentonhausen, and his wife.
away from two very close friends killed in an aircraft accident. Tony Bettenhausen's best finish, though, came here in the very first Michigan 581. Officially scored a second. Roncho Carter won it. But there are a lot of people here that think that Tony Bettenhausen may have, in fact, won that race. That was never scored in the race win. Alex Tagliani, the rookie, 157 completed lap. We work 158. And this rookie came forward with a great deal of verb and now runs well in front. This is really the first long lead we've seen stretched out in some time. Gary Gerald. Joe LeFerrin is on a cart being taken to the medical center. We heard the report that you got hit by debris. What's happened to your index finger here? Uh, I think it's broken uh, on the uh, accident where, uh, where Kenny uh, went off. A piece, uh, I think it was his rear wing came right in my cockpit and ri hit my left hand and uh, it was really sore from them on and they're on it. We try to brave it, but, uh, and you know, Kyle was handling well and I was just biding my time there, but uh, we got um, a hit on the front end by, uh, by Jourdain and uh, it bent the right front suspension, that was that. How hard was it to drive with the finger in that condition? It was difficult, you know, because the whole hand started to go numb and uh, I kind of had to start driving only with my right hand, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Well, the concern then becomes what happens for next week, and I guess you're about to go find out. I'll be all right. All right. He says he'll be all right. We'll take his word for it. Keep in mind, the driver's heads are pinned, so if they're behind a wreck, there's a lot of debris. They have no ability to duck or to move from side to side. With these kinds of speeds, you can't make an abrupt movement with the steering wheel. I've seen half shafts, gearbox parts, pieces of engines flying, and you just close your eyes and hope that nothing hits you in a vital place. And I'm glad Jill DeFerrin didn't have any serious injury in his finger. Dario Franchitti now makes his appearance up at the front of the order as he starts to battle with Adrian Fernandez. Franchitti currently eighth. Moved down the back step. Had a uh, test with Jaguar at Formula One this week. Yellow comes out. Yellow comes out. We have a player's car off the fourth corner. And Alex Tagliani, who had just picked up the lead, catches the wall off of turn four and comes to a stop in the tri-oval. Remember, Tagliani had a chance to win the first race at Homestead, but he passed the pace car. And then at Rio, he had several chances to win. Spun on restart. Leading the race here today, he hits the turn four wall. Hey, Tag, how you doing? And this is the first time Alex Zimmerman trying to find out if his driver is okay. Tag has not yet answered him. There's what happened for him. Oh, did you Big see hit. Castro Nevis just missed the back of the car? Well, as not Tag just Castro Nevis. That looked like Tracy that came through low there. That was very close. As he came off the last corner, Tagliani's car got away from him. The back end stepped out, rotated with into the outside wall. Close called by the trailing drivers there. They were trying to radio Tagliani, make sure he was okay. Of course, the accident may, in fact, have damaged the uh, radio system. That's a safety two truck from CART. Dr. Terry Trammell is the one straddling the car. And a world-renowned orthopedic surgeon who cares not only for most of these drivers, but for many of the athletes. Here, Parker, here you now go. Watch Tagliani. Watch the back of the car here. Your full throttle coming off this corner. You're Focused on the outside wall, trying to let the car out. Watch Castor Nevis here. He starts to go high, thinking that the car will continue to spin low. Just misses the right rear of Tag's car. Impact here, oil fire. Now watch it slide back to the inside. Michael goes low, Montoya goes low. And Christian Fittipaldi. This is Christian Fittipaldi. Look at the debris field trailing that car. Huge wreck on the outside. Tagliani unclimbed out of the car. And climbs over the wall. He's obviously okay, Jan, but he was communicating with the crew just before the accident? Yes, he was. In fact, he called in and said, don't change anything on this car. We are fast in all four corners. But, Parker, as you know, when you're fast in all four corners, it means you're on the edge of being loose, maybe too close to that edge. And that's the problem that we saw down in Rio, Jan, and this is really the first time since that race that he's come back to the forefront to lead. And it just got away from him. Rookie and experience. Remember, he's one of the few drivers that have very little experience on super speedways. While his rookie year has been somewhat successful, that lack of experience has cost him greatly in at least three races now. So Castro Nevis 
under this caution picks up the lead of the race. It's the 164th lap right now. Lined up behind Castro Nevis, Michael Andretti, Montoya, Fittipaldi. Tracy, who had a very close call going down low on Tagliani as he came off of the wall. Don't forget, we've got that British Open wrap-up show presented by MasterCard coming up next on ABC Sports. Well, there's Elio Castroneves. Scored his first victory this year. Very likable young Brazilian. Like most of the Brazilians racing in the series, they actually call South Florida home. And I tell you, after an accident like that, if you're one of the following drivers, your first reaction is usually to hit the button, the radio push the talk button, and call scream. Call us when you're coming into pit lane. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Just got a quick eye contact with Rick Reinemann, works the right front for Castro Nevis. All the crew saw the big screen. They saw how close that was. He put his thumb and his forefinger about a quarter of an inch apart, and then he tapped on his heart as if to say, how close can you come? Now they spring into action. We've got triple pit action for you here now as the leaders all try to hit their marks. Castro Nevis on the top. Then Michael and Montoya. First, second. Montoya. It's going to be good for Montoya. And keep an eye on Pappas. He had a great stop down here at Pit In. 8.6 for Montoya. What a great stop that is. And that gives him some, some vastly needed track position for when they come back. So with... Now yet another stop complete. We begin to move toward the final segments of the Michigan 500. 8.9 second pit stop. Juan Montoya is the leader of the race as we show you the field summary. They already have Alex Tagliani's car on the hook and taking it back to the paddock area. 166 laps are now complete in this 20th running of the Michigan 500. And the race is still very far from being decided. Remember, twice in the history of this race, the race has been decided in the last mile. Some of the owners watching from high above and down in the pit area. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. As he leads the field under the caution, we give you the pit summary last time around. And Parker, you're beginning to think ahead now toward the end of the race with 168 laps complete and thinking about what the fuel and pit stop strategy may in fact be as we go to the end of this run. We've been monitoring a lot of communications with the drivers. They're talking about conserving fuel, trying to make it in one more stop. But according to my fuel calculations, they're going to have to have aerial refueling to go to the end of this in one more stop if it stays green. <laughs> Here's the Budweiser Hard Charger Award. Luis Garcia Jr., there he is, 71 points over. Cristiano D'Amato is already out of the race. Adrian Fernandez, now they did this on the 89th lap and got out of the sink of the race. Patrick Racing does this quite a bit, don't they, Gary? Yeah, and they had determined that he would have to get 2.5 miles per gallon the rest of the way to make it on one more stop. Well, they figured, I guess, that was too much, so they've topped him off now. He goes back out. Let's go to Jan. Well, Kenny Breck has made his way out from the medical center. And, Kenny, I know you were really hot when you got out of the car. Now have you had a chance to think about it, what happened in that accident? Well, you know, a place like this, you run side by side for uh, basically 500 miles. You can't get away from each other, so it's very important that you leave room for, uh, for the other competitors. And uh, I, uh, I was on the outside of uh, another car, and uh, he didn't leave room for me. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, what happened. Had you run side by side with Christian any place else on the racetrack prior? Yeah, you ran side by side ev everywhere. Uh, I guess I don't know if he didn't see me, if his mirror fell off or his spotter fell asleep. I don't know, but uh, it was unfortunate. He's racing. It happens, but uh, we have to go on to the next one. All right, we're going back to green. Thank you, Kenny. Yeah, remember, it's been some time since that accident. As we go back to green flag racing again, so Kenny has had a considerable time to calm down. Here is Paul Tracy as on the restart. He moves to the lead, getting around Montoya. Montoya drops into second, Castro Nevis to third. Then Michael, then Christian Fittipaldi. Franchitti moves way, way low on Fittipaldi while at the same time Pappas goes high. Michael down inside Castro Nevis. Carpentier tries to move down below the white. 
line trying to move on Fittipaldi. Again, Fittipaldi with a, a lot of damage on the right side of that car as a result of the contact with Kenny Breck. But it hasn't seemed to slow him down that much at all. Carpentier. And Carpentier takes him. Now Carpentier lines up on Dario Franchitti. Franchitti's teammate Paul Tracy still on point. Castro Nevis works high. Montoya works low. Everybody splits out. Looks for the pass. Tracy maintains the lead. Montoya has to come up high behind him. Michael moves low. And then drops back in the line, but here comes Castro Nevis. And Michael comes low. Pappas comes up high and slows. Boy, that cost Pappas. Tracy still leads. Now Castro Nevis gets a nose in front of him, and Castro Nevis takes the lead. Montoya comes up on Tracy. I'm almost thinking at this point, Parker, it's a question of not do I want to lead. Don't I prefer to be back just trying to save fuel? I was just thinking exactly that. You see Max Pappas hanging back. I think Michael's hanging back a little bit. If you're going for fuel strategy, you don't want to be at the front. You want to stay clear of trying to run in clean air so that you can take advantage of the draft, breathe the throttle going down into one and three. Turn the fuel mapping down as much as possible. Run the engine as lean as possible. Where Max Pappas is right now, I think, is a perfect position. It's going to be interesting. The yellows could have, if there's a yellow before the end, it could affect, the, obviously, the entire complexion of this race. But I still think they have to make two stops if they keep it under green. If you have to make two, maybe you go out front. John Vickers, you got a couple of updates for us. I do. With Dr. Steve Olby, how is Alex Tagliani? Alex is uh, fine. Jan will be released uh, anytime. He's in there talking to Gilles DeFerrin right now. Crew member for Damata? The crew member for Damata has several abrasions of his extremity uh, with some bruising, uh, but no fractures. Uh, we're having our physical therapist see him now, and he'll be released before too long. And finally, Gilles DeFerrin. Gilles DeFerrin, unfortunately, has a small fracture of his left index finger. I'm waiting till the end of the race for our orthopedic uh, surgeon, Dr. Terry Trammell, to take a look at him uh, to decide what we need to do about that. Thanks. Okay. Patrick Carpentier drops down inside of Elio Castroneves. Tracy continues now to surge up to the front and battle with Montoya. And you have to be very careful here. Rick Mears, the master of the super speedways, used to preach. He spent 400 to 450 miles getting the car right, being patient to sprint the last 50. But I'm not seeing much patience here. Everyone just looking for clean air through the corners to get back together on the straightaways for the draft. And I think as we get to the end of this, we'll see less of uh, the consideration for other drivers. Right now, they're leaving openings so that they're not taking air off each other's cars. But I think we're going to see some chopping and slicing as we get in the last 50 laps of this race. Pappas down inside Carpentier. That red car that you're seeing out in front. Mimo Gidley replacing Roberto Fontana for this race and the race next week at Chicago. He's giving that car a nice ride in front of the leader. There's Gidley. Tracy is actually the leader just behind Gidley. He's doing his best to keep from going a lap down, and he's doing a very nice job of it. First, second, and third, Honda, Toyota, Honda, and then two more. We'll be back with more from Michigan. Let's look at the prowess at 500-mile races of Juan Montoya. Finished second last year by the narrowest of margins. They moved the line three feet. He would have won it. He did win this year at the Indianapolis 500. He was leading just seconds ago, and Castro Nevis got around him. He dropped back to third. Paul Tracy is still in there. So is Michael Andretti as they chase Castro Nevis. But 
We heard a radio conversation between Barry Green and Paul Tracy while we were away, and Green said they're using us, mate. It's exactly what you're thinking. Well, that's what I had said a little earlier. I said Paul's going to feel cheap and dirty when this is all over because if he's out leading, the other guys are getting better fuel consumption. Their engines aren't getting the work out that Paul's was, and they told Paul to back off and not lead. They've said the same thing now to Michael Andretti and Juan Montoya. Juan Montoya, though, says, hey, if I'm gonna, if they make me, I'll go ahead and lead this thing. Elio Castroneves now has the biggest lead anyone's had this day, 2.2 seconds. Try to get mileage. We need mileage here. A lot of guys are going to be playing this game. Jan Vikas. Alex Tagliani is out of the medical center. You're okay. What happened? Uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, if it's a driver mistake, I'll take full responsibility of it. But uh, I was I was surprised by a bump on the track, and I just uh, lost the rear of the car. I don't know why. I mean, I'm very sorry for um, the player sports side team because my car was uh, was great, and we had the car to win today. It was just uh, as soon as we took the lead, I was uh, lifting uh, in some of the corners and upshifting uh, just to wait for everybody, but it seems that nobody wanted to pass me, so uh, we had a very good car. Did you take a different line that you might have hit, a, hit an unexpected bump? Yeah, maybe a little bit, maybe uh, like a middle line just to save my tires. I was not like, you know, squeezing the line up to the apron, but um, it was very difficult because uh, the car was was great and it was good behind traffic and it, as soon as I got out to the lead I was flat out all the way around and I had to wait because I didn't want to use too much fuel and uh, suddenly I got surprised because the car reacted very strangely over that bump and um, I lost it. Well guys he said he had a great time out there and thankfully he's okay. Elio Castro Nevis 2.6 seconds out in front now I'm not so sure that's the wisest strategy. While we were away, we want to show you what happened to Max Pappas. Because he got in the middle of this. Not very often you hear drivers lift in the middle of the straightaway. Paul, I think this man, Max Pappas, feels that this track owes him. He's playing a very intelligent, very mature game of staying back, staying out of the lead. I think he's got a great car underneath him. I think the Ray Hall Racing Crew has given him exactly what he needs to sprint those last few laps. And I think he's just being patient and coy right now. Pastor Nevis, the gap is uh, narrowed down a little bit. 1.7 miles and uh, or 1.7 seconds from the leader. Back to second place, Andretti, Gary Gerald. Well, every one of these leaders here, all the radio conversations, all pertain to conserving fuel. And now, the word is becoming more definitive. It's just to the point, if you don't get us better fuel, you're definitely going to have to make an additional stop. These drivers are trying their best. Nobody wants to lead. Mauricio Guzman said, find me a rabbit. Or he was told, find a rabbit. We need mileage. And, and up and down the line, it's the same story. Castro Nevis, I guess, right now is the rabbit. But uh, unless somebody comes up with some dramatic savings, they're all going to have to come in for that extra stop, and nobody wants to. Well, Gary Gerald, if Catherine Nevis is the rabbit, why would he want to be? Why doesn't he just drop back? Well, maybe they've already decided that they think everybody's in that same boat, and they're all going to have to make the extra stop anyhow, so why not get as much of advantage as you can in case uh, you lose a second or two in the pits? Just One. guessing. 1.9 seconds, Castro Nevis to Andretti last time around. The other driver that's playing into the strategy is don't forget that Adrian Fernandez did that, that top up on lap 169, six laps later than anybody else did. He's used the strategy successfully before with the Patrick Racing Team. Remember at Motegi, some other races where everybody else has tried to stretch the fuel, they've had to dive in. And there's Adrian Fernandez all alone on the track fighting the checkered flag. My only old team manager, Jim McGee, coming up with that kind of strategy. One Rio for him. Carpentier makes his presence known once again. Carpentier goes to second. Michael ahead of Pappas, Montoya down to the left. Last time they pitted. Remember, they all came in under the yellow under lap 163. 163 and once exactly. again, Fernandez came in six laps later on lap 169 to top up. 
And on that onboard briefly, you can hear Max lifting again. Everybody's on a lap 163 stop with the exception of Fernandez. One of the unique features of this track, you see it on the super speedways, the long contest, we talked a little bit about the carbon fiber brakes. But the other thing that a couple of the engine manufacturers have had to do is they put in an additional oil tank. The engines are running very few rings for uh, compression and oil to minimize the frictional losses, and therefore they use a lot of oil. So during the midway point of the race, these drivers have an additional switch where they have to pump several quarts of oil back into the engine to make up for the oil consumption during the course of the race. Normally in a 500-mile race, at about this point, as they approach the last 100 miles of the run, we're saying, now it's time for them to really throttle up and go racing. They've been racing right from the get-go. Elio Castroneves is the leader as the strategy now begins to play. Most garage sales are full of stuff people don't want, but this isn't most garage sales. Amazing things can happen when you push the right buttons. over the 200th lap. Castro Nevis is still the leader. He now leads by a wide 9.4 seconds. Oriole Servi in the past couple of laps has charged to the front, moves into second place ahead of Paul Tracy, Juan Montoya, and Dario Franchitti. But Castro Nevis, are they playing the same strategy we've seen Penske go time and time again and try to run them way out there? I think that's exactly what they're doing. If they have designed themselves to two additional stops, they're going to put Castro Nevis at full power, send him out and say, okay, we're going to do this stop and then a splash and go at the end. Try to get as big a lead as you can. But we watch Oriole Serbia. Remember, he spent the last few years here in Indy Lights. He's used to having 18, 20 cars all within a second running in a big fur ball going around this track. He's very comfortable in this group of cars. A giant lead, 9.3 seconds. Giant with regard to this race for Elio Castro Nevis. There's second place, Servia. Right, yellowish green car with Tracy. Now this drafting group is using Servia. They're just, they spread out in the corners so they get clean air over the cars. They go down the straightaways to get back in line. They're up in top gear. They've got it leaned out, drafting behind Servia. We've heard a few reports that guys are gonna be about five laps short of making it one more stop. So they're really trying to conserve fuel. And as you said, Paul, I think Cash Nevis says, all right, fine, if we've got to make two stops, I'm just going to go. Specifically, that was the report from Patrick Carpentier. But it also sounds like Max Pappas may actually be right on the game plan, currently running in ninth, 10 seconds behind the leader. So while that group is back some distance from Catherine Nevis, they are still all bunched up. And remember, Cash Nevis was the first of the leaders to come in since the beginning of the race, we expect that he's going to be in in just a few laps, and then we'll see how this game plays out. Jan Vigas, what's going on with Mad Max? Well, you called it, Paul. They have called him on the radio, and they said the last time, or the next time you come onto pit road, it will be your last time. You only have to make one more stop. Now, they also know that everyone up and down pit road monitors those radio transmissions. So maybe they're just laying it out there to scare everybody thinking that they could make it, because, boy, by our calculations, it would be tight up and down pit road and about half the grandstand with their scanner. It's become quite a hobby. Elio Castroneves on the pit road. Lap 205. Gary? I think part of that strategy we were talking about, we failed to take into consideration the fact that he has been the leader in the pit sequence all afternoon long. So they knew, apparently, that they had no shot or at least unless they got a huge amount of yellow. So he pushed the lead as much as he could. Now at that 50 mile per hour pace, he comes down and he hits the marks and the Penske crew goes to work one more time. With these big tanks that are used for the fuel in 500 mile races, the fueling gravity fed gets a little slower late in the race. He's ready, the revs are way up, 12 seconds and counting. Now he's clear to go, 13 eight. Elio comes back out. Serbia picks up the lead of the race. A 
will be 45 laps to the end for Elio Castro Nevis. Well, we talked about it at the beginning of the program. If you can pull out one, two, three, four laps over the course, six or seven stops, that makes a huge difference. 18, 20 plus laps by the end of the race. And that's the difference between making it to the end now on that one last stop or Castro Nevis being resigned to one more stop now before the end. Oriel Servia comes out of the lead into the pits. Tracy and Carpentier follow him in. 200 you on the marks. You need to get on the marks. 208th lap. Jan? This would be a bit early, I would think, to make it all the way to the end. And as Gary said, the fuel will take a little bit longer, and they'll be absolutely sure they get all of it. You see the vent hose right above him. They wait till they see fuel in that vent hose. Watch Tony, watch Tony, watch Tony. There it is. Now the question remains, can he make it to the end? And Oriel Serbia leaves, and he gets out of here now. he got some companies. He heads for the pit exit here in a flurry of smoke after about a 15.4 second stop. Well, Tracy got a position on Serbia and Carpentier with that round to stop. Michael Andretti becomes the leader with Montoya working on him. They've carried it now to the 209th lap. These guys have averaged about two miles per gallon. They've gone about 35 laps through this whole race. Well, now having to go 41 laps, they're going to have to get upwards of 2.35, 2.4 miles per gallon. According to my fuel chart, we're talking a 20% increase. That's a dramatic difference in fuel economy. Montoya took a fast turn off of the course and came for the pit. So did Max Pappas, yeah? Yes, and last time he had a, just a smoking fast pit stop. We'll see how fast they can do this one. Of course, he has one more lap on some of the other guys. Oh, baby. There it is. Go, go, go. Gary, one. wing change for Juan Montoya. Radio problems continue. This is taking much longer than usual. He's finally moving at 14 and a half seconds. They were making the wing adjustment based on his hand gesture. Michael Andretti comes off the lead and onto the pit road with Dario Franchitti. Watch your speed into pit lane, Mike. Christian is already pitted. Square it up. Remember, the surface is slick. Nice and easy. Dario Franchitti right behind Michael as Michael headed in. Gary? Your marks, Mike. Michael Andretti comes in now. Boy, he's been so picture perfect every time he's come gliding in today. Being very careful, very precise. That's experience. Watch now running the 17th, 500 miles. Servio will be given the black flag for a drive-through penalty. He got two wheels over the line where the officials demand that there be four wheels under the line. The leader of the race is now Fernandez. And we talked about Pat Patrick and Jim McGee. This is how the race will now unfold. He hasn't come in for his last stop yet. When he does and he exits, he will have more fuel than anybody else on the track. He'll be able to run full power, more revs, and that should give him a significant advantage going to the checkered flag. We're on the 212 of 250 lap. He can hold out just a little bit longer. Will it be his last stop? It will be. I don't think there's any doubt. Some of the other guys, I think, unless they are just really conservative, they'll have to do a splash and go, but now Adrian's headed into the pit lane. So Fernandez comes in to make what I'm sure Patrick Racing hopes is his last stop. The question is, will it be? It seems like everyone else is probably going to be dropping into the pits for a splash and go right at the end of the race. Tires are changed. The fuel flows. Clearing out some debris on the right rear of the car. Well, they had problems getting that debris out of there. Adrian started to creep, and they were still tugging. I don't know if they got it all out or not. Yeah, one of the guys came over and said, let him go, let him go, grabbed his shoulders. And a big change on the front wings on Fernandez's car as well. Leo Castro Nevis takes the lead back over. So, did Fernandez cut it close enough? Can Castro Nevis drive away? We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC station.
not so good. Yeehaw. The only thing harder than becoming a star... Singing is all I've ever dreamed about doing. ...is learning to love the famous mother that left you behind. I trusted you and you lied to me again. Diana Ross. It's been very painful for me. Brandy. Painful. You don't have any idea. The story of a daughter. I didn't have anywhere else to go. Discovering who she really is. Can't you give me a chance to be the mother that you need now? Double Platinum, ABC Monday at 8, 7 Central. A home of your own, that's what most families strive for. It's the reward for hard work. And at Piedmont Federal, it's always been our job to help families make their dreams come true, even when the obstacles seem overwhelming. We try hard to help our customers find a way to achieve their goals every day. After all, we are the home loan specialists. We've been helping families in Northwest North Carolina with home loan needs since 1903. Piedmont Federal, Winston-Salem, Kernersville, Clemens, Boone, and North Wilkesboro. Computer and information technology, wireless communications, website development. All great careers. So where do you train for your new career? Ask an ECPI graduate, then call us. They tell you exactly what is most important at that time. Uh, their curriculum constantly changed. Begin 500 on ABC Sports, brought to you by Brew Refresh Budweiser, official beer of cart. This Bud's for you. You're looking down on the Michigan Speedway from the Honda Helicam. Elio Castro Nevis has just completed his 219th lap of the 250 scheduled. We have had 124 unofficial lead changes, 44 officially among 10 different drivers. Castro Nevis leads. Adrian Fernandez came out into second place, and there's where the game is. Castro Nevis trying to get as much of a lead as he can on the remainder of the field so that he can dart into the pits for a splash and go and finish this race in front. While Fernandez, by all good guesses, as we look at the pit summary, and Servia suffers heavily because of his penalty, by all guesses, Fernandez goes all the way to the end as they go four wide again. Gary? I can't believe it every time I look up and watch him go four wide into that first turn. We just got word from the Fernandez camp. They think they've got the fuel. They think that being last in the sequence, that he can get here. And uh, that, of course, as you said, is the absolute... Oh! Christian Fittipaldi gets in trouble. Takes a long ride on the grass. The car stays to the ground. And he doesn't touch a thing. The only thing that came off was the front shock cover. The only wild card, the only variable, was the yellow flag, Paul. This is just what uh, the other drivers were praying for, racing with Adrian Fernandez. Christian has had enough, though. He throws the steering wheel out of the car and starts to unbuckle. Well, he, he just he missed right up. He misjudged the pullout. He's, he pulled hard to the left and made contact with the right front wheel. And there is the luckiest man in this race yet today. He's limping, though. They, well, they... that car took a heck of a ride. It may not have, have had any specific damage, but going through the grass at 230 miles, it looks like he banged his knee or his ankle. Up on his helmet there, that's the Hans device that Christian is wearing, trying to help protect from neck injuries, neck and head injuries. You can see him. He pulls out, nearly gets Max Pappas as well, clips the back of his teammate's car, Michael Andretti. Christian Fittipaldi is so fortunate this car didn't hook wheels in the grass or over those access roads and start to tumble. Very, very fortunate. Now watch, he makes a dramatic move pulling out from behind Michael. Comes out, nearly collects Max Pappas. Just completely misjudged, pulling out to the left there on the way down the back straightaway. I'm worried about Christian, though, limping away from the car like that. He's a superb athlete and now asks his current safety team, they've got to help him. If he runs triathlon all the time, so to think that uh, he has any kind of injury from that, the bouncing certainly would have done that to him. Max Pappas, I don't think Pappas missed Fittipaldi by more than about four inches. Castro Nevis, still the leader.
Next Monday, July 31st, the NFL kicks off its 31st season on ABC as we head to Canton, Ohio, where Jerry Rice and the 49ers will face Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots. The Hall of Fame game. We're under caution once again at a most opportune time. It's because of the incident involving Christian Fittipaldi. Yellow helmet back there. This was a most frightening accident. He just barely missed Pappas. And Pappas almost got over into Tracy. And until you've driven on a super speedway, you have you can't understand the feeling of helplessness when something goes wrong. You have no idea how fast you're going until you get off. Keep in mind, Christian was probably doing 245 miles an hour plus when he hit the grass. Castro Nevis up crowding the pace car. His team was laid out, ready to refuel him. Well, he is. Uh, they, there he goes. He made the turn, Gary. Yeah. So Elio Castro Nevis comes off the lead and into the pits. He did, in fact, need fuel. At the starter stand, they're saying one more lap to go. Oh, excuse me, Montoya comes in too. It's going to be a little longer than that. I thought for a moment they were going to get caught with the field increasing speed to come to the green. Montoya and Castro Nevis both make their stop. Final load of fuel, and they are giving him fresh Firestone rubber as well. No aerodynamic changes. It's a quick fuel, complete nine seconds. Montoya is right behind, and uh, Montoya goes by him. Montoya got him just at the blend line, but I think it was clean to the blend line. So Montoya, Castro Nevis, they both stop. It's going to be a sprint to the finish. You worry about your car lasting? Imagine going 500 miles in one stretch at 200 miles an hour. That can zap the life right out of your car. That's why my team has always used Havlin Motor Oil, the same unique formula. Paul Tracy back in Michigan is on pit road to just wash and go. Speed limit, speed limit, and no violation on the exit. No violation on the exit. No new tires for Fuel Paul Tracy. Is correct, so you're getting ready for a green flag the next time by. No mistakes on that exit, though. Next time by, he will get the green and all the fuel he wants to use. Juan Montoya and Elio Castro Nevis came out eighth and ninth. We saw Castro Nevis get fresh tires and that would seem to me beyond the fuel to be the real advantage you'd want to get well i think it is we talked about track position all day long and the advantage that fernandez would have but with this yellow flag that's all gone out the window coming at the back of the field like tracy has means absolutely nothing you watch cash nevis montoya and tracy within a couple laps they'll be back at the front one, 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 one. adrian fernandez carpentier and buddy Top three pace comes up. They are not going to give it the green. No green on that start. Gary Gerald. We did not have a good look at Montoya on his stop. We were with Castro Nevis. We saw Castro Nevis get the fresh tires. Just checked with Montoya's crew. He did not change tires. So he's got old Firestones on. He does have the fuel, however, that he can go full rich to the end. Now let's check at the other end of the pits with Young. Well, during the caution flag, they called to Max Pappas and say, Max, we're a little disappointed in your yellow fuel mileage. He says, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> then he calls back a few minutes later and he says, just make sure you tell me when I can blow past all these guys. Well, they just called him now and said, you've got all the fuel you need. Go for it. Have at it. Look at the field summary. Pappas is fifth. Go on green. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on is right. Here we go. Green, green, green. Fernandez brings them back to the green. Frankini moves high, Michael comes low. They work to split Carpentier. Michael gets down under him, goes to second. And this is the Saturday night main event, sprint to the finish. Cass Nevis, the only guy with fresh tires, it'll be a slight advantage. Frankini comes back at Carpentier. Oh, they're close there. That fights for third. courtesy that the drivers have been extending to one another during the course of this race is about to evaporate. He used to be my friend. Michael Andretti takes the lead away from Fernandez. Here comes Frankini. Not meaning you, Parker, meaning the guys <laughs> to one another. 
Max Pappas now begins to work on Carpentier for fourth. There's Pappas down low on Carpentier. Light for second. Fernandez grabs second. Oh, look how close they are up on the exit there. That's exactly what I was talking about. Adrian left him a car width and a couple inches out to the wall. Dario tucked in back behind. While we watch this at the front, Montoya is going just as fast as he can. He's up to seventh now. Well, you can see him there. You can take any time you want. Castro Nevis up to six. You can see him right there at the back. Barry Green telling Paul Tracy to use the overtake button. That puts it in full reach, full advance on the Montoya, timing. Montoya, there goes Montoya. And here he comes. Montoya's not been up at the front of the field since the 164th lap, but he spent a lot of time in second place. And Reddy stretches the lead to eight tenths of a second. Montoya goes alongside Franchitti. Fernandez has fallen all the way back to fifth. They're going to the closing laps now. Andretti, Montoya, Franchitti. It's going to be a fight to the finish. To do battle with Michael Andretti. And they have been seesawing back and forth in a battle for the lead. Andretti has just taken the lead back. From Montoya. At the same time, Dario Franchitti and Max Pappas are battling for third. But on the last couple of laps, Pappas has shown a little smoke or a little vapor, something at the back of the car. Here comes Montoya once again for the lead. And the 240th lap. And the gloves are off between this two. They've been chopping each other, taking the air off each other's car. I think Montoya's got a stronger car underneath him right now, but he can't break the draft with Michael. He's been able to extend it eight, go. nine car lengths, but then Michael picks up the toe and goes right back. Look at Montoya, push him up high, going down into the first corner. Montoya low, Michael high. Concern about spray off the back of Mauricio Guzman's car. They've given him the black flag. He was running ninth. There. This is the fight for the lead in the Michigan 500. But these aren't the only two really in this fight. Every once in a while, you'll hear the voice of the spotter just say clear. Letting the driver know that he can move up or come down. Last time around, the scoring computer showed the interval first to second at one thousandth of a second. Michael and Juan are giving each other room, but they are definitely pushing each other to the far ends of the groove, up into the gray. Whoa, look at the move down across. Juan saw Michael come up for the draft. He cut right back down to the bottom. 49 lead changes at the line throughout the run with eight laps to go at the Michigan 500. Michael coming back at Montoya. You can see the power of the draft there. Last week on the streets of Toronto, we said that that 40th win for Michael would help be an incentive. And it has given him new life, new vigor. Pappas continues to battle with Frank Keaty for third. Then Carpentier, Castro Nevis, and Fernandez. There. Montoya and Andretti, both in Lola chassis, being followed by a couple of Bernard chassis. But right now, it's Toyota versus Ford, Andretti versus Montoya. Is that our 50th lead change? Six to go. Six. Six to go. In that engine battle, Toyota v. Ford. That's for enormous bragging rights. For Juan Montoya, this is his fourth 500-mile race. For Michael Andretti, his 37th. Montoya, the only other driver in this series to compete in another 500-mile race. Oh, Mike, he makes a quick move to dart out. Grabs the lead again from Montoya. 
And right now, these two are trying to figure out the ultimate strategy that puts them... Five to go, five to go. A nose ahead right there at the start-finish stripe. Do they have to be high or low going there. down that back straightaway into the last corner so they can draft up and lead coming off of turn four? Maybe you want to be second. Maybe you've got enough time to pop out and draft by. But it looks... I've been watching this game, Paul. It's been very, very close. The following driver going into turn three can get up side by side, but can't get a definite advantage by the time they get to the start finish strike. If start finish was down another 50 to 100 yards, it would work. Well, the timing line is a little bit down this year. They had to move it down a little bit just to get a good cut into the track surface for the computerized scoring antenna that reads the transponder. Tony Kanan last year took the lead and won this race in the last mile. John Paul Jr. did the same racing with Rick Mears. Last mile of the race, took the lead and the win. You can see that time what Montoya did is he blocked off the inside going into turn three. Whoa, left Michael the high side. There. And if Montoya can get a little farther out, he'll break the draft. He's still putting up a big enough wind shadow at this distance for Michael to get him. Max Pappas finally had his problem develop into something truly serious and is off the run. Jan Bikas. He called on the radio and said, I think the engine's gone. He's just trying to bring it home if he can. Montoya, Andretti. Franchitti, now Carpentier to fourth. Casper Nevis and Fernandez battle for fifth. But the big fight is here at the front of the field. Will it play out this way? Will you be able to draft on that last lap down the backside? Let's see if Montoya can come back before the start finish strike. Okay, it doesn't last look lap, like it. Last lap, one to go. Michael wanted the lead with one lap to go. I'm surprised at that. But Juan takes it back. Montoya down inside. Montoya takes the lead of the race. Carso Marquez, a slower car just ahead. Michael darts out on the back stretch. Michael tries to get it down inside. Montoya's going to stay right there on the outside. The slower car is just ahead. Montoya. Now Andretti, and they almost touch. They may have touched. The slower car is going to be a factor as Montoya brings him to the line. And Montoya takes the Michigan 500. What a finish. Four one hundredths of a second. Montoya over Michael. And Montoya's ninth career win. What a brilliant move. Michael Andretti thought he would box Montoya behind Marquez. Instead, Montoya picked up Marquez's draft and was able to use that to pull ahead of Michael Andretti. The timing couldn't have been any more perfect. No one Montoya has taken the win at the Michigan 500. Here's the last few hundred feet. Michael's thinking, good, I've got him boxed in. But no, instead, Montoya picks up the draft behind Marquez and pulls a car length in front of Michael. Once again, an unbelievable finish to the Michigan 500. We promised you some driving, and there has been today, but Montoya has proven to be the best among all the drivers at the Michigan 500. We'll be back. Nothing like food and water. Juan Montoya battling with Michael Andretti on the final lap. Montoya times the cross of the line perfectly. It is the fourth closest finish in card history at four hundredths of a second. Montoya, Toyota, and target Chip Ganassi. They're all winners. Gary? By four hundredths of a second, Juan, there's something about these 500-mile races, but tell me about the last 10 or 15 laps in that battle with Michael Andretti. What was it like from your seat? I was really good, you know, at the beginning of the race I said, okay, you know, play with Michael, he's very clean, he's very good to race against Michael, he's very clean, and he can just run side by side, and when, you know, I start going by the field and said, oh, this is going to be good, he's going to go away, it's only when I pass Michael, he just passed me back, and he passed him back, and he passed me back, and it was, uh, everything was about timing, he was going to cross the line first, so I tried to play it a bit different into one, I thought it was going to work, he's going to be very close, because if I pass him really late in the corner, he was going to get into it, my turbulence. 
I thought it was going to work, and suddenly we come out of the last corner side by side, and there's this guy in front of us, and like, I'm not going to lift. If I would have to hit the guy, I would have hit it. <laughs> now tell me about how tough it was to get the car set up because you had radio communication problems with Chip and the crew. Oh, the car was really good from the beginning of the race. I think all my guys, you know, Bill, Chuck, Eric, all of them did a fantastic job of putting you know, give me a great car, and all my mechanics did a fantastic job as well. Just a real quick note, we look down here in the side pod, you can see it looks like you got hit by debris on the roll bar. Did that come, was that from one of those earlier incidents? Uh, yeah, when, you know, when, when Christian pushed Brock into the wall, uh, it, all the car just bounced against me, and like, ooh, I moved up and something hit me in the helmet on there. Well, at least he's all right. And he says a moment ago, now we got to win one next week for their sponsor in Chicago. Here comes the beautiful Toyota Trophy for the Michigan 500, Paul. And look at the grin on this young kid. He's done it again at 500 miles. Well, he should be smiling. He is the first driver since Rick Mears in 1991 to win at Indy and at Michigan in the same year. Castro Nevis led the most laps. Paul Tracy got the point for the poll. We'll be back. Um, your website's getting... Michigan 500 on ABC Sports. Brought to you by FedEx. Proud sponsor of the FedEx Championship Series. And Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Back at Michigan Speedway where Michael Andretti, you came oh so close to that victory. Did the slower car of Tarso Marquez make a difference? Well, he could have either helped me win or helped Juan, and he helped Juan. Uh, <clears throat> you know, he, 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 I started to catch his draft coming off the corner, and then he decided to go high instead of low. He started to go low. I thought, yeah, and then he went high, and then he just uh, allowed um, Juan to uh, get a suction up behind him, and that was a difference. You know, it was a shame because uh, we had a perfect race. We did everything we wanted to do, laid back, uh, held back, and saved fuel and the whole bit, and... Uh, had what we needed to fight in the end, and, uh, and then we lost it there. We had great pit stops. The whole Kmart Texaco team did great pit stops, and then the Ford engine was perfect as well the whole race. So, uh, you know, it just came down to the end. We almost beat it. And, guys, he also said to some of his crew, he thinks maybe Juan trimmed his car out just a little bit more. Well, there is some good news for Michael Andretti because he does take a 14-point lead over Roberto Moreno in the points fight here just past the midway point. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC station. 100 miles at Michigan. Juan Montoya averaged 177.6 miles an hour to drive to a finish just four hundredths of a second ahead of Michael Andretti, the third closest finish in card history. Dario Franchitti was sitting back in third place to watch all of that. Here's Gary Gerald. Dario, as you battled for your own spot, third place and a spot on the podium, did you think that those two guys in front of you, Andretti and Montoya, were going to end up in the wall? It was pretty close, but no, I, they knew what they were doing. They were close, but I was actually behind them in Japan when they crashed last year um, in testing, but uh, they didn't look like they were going to have an accident today. It was, it was very close, though. And one other quick thought about other close calls in debris. A lot of guys got hit by it. How about you today? I actually hit it a couple of times because it was right in front of me. You'd come out of a corner and there would be, there would be stuff all over the track. So we were lucky. We, we cut three tires, but we came into the pit right at the right time. So it was an interesting day out there. Very exciting racing and um, a lot of fun. Well, in the 20th running of the Michigan 500, 151 unofficial lead changes, 53 today, and look at us there in the closest finishes. We'll be right back. You worry about your car last and I'm gonna go. We'll have coverage right here on ABC Sports. Let's go down to Gary Gerald. With Elio Castro Nevis, that last stop, you got the fuel, you got the tires. Are you disappointed you weren't able to get up and challenge the leaders? Yeah, I was. Unfortunately, I went have like three guys uh, on the t on the front. Uh, they were one of them was taking my line, and I was very upset because I couldn't get closer because of the understeer, the amount of understeer. It was unfortunately, but uh, I have to take the fifth place. All right, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Elio Castro Nevis finishes in fifth place. Parker Johnstone, him sat down all day. What a tremendous run. Great battle with Montoya, Andretti, and the rest. Toyota's first 500 mile run. Dario Franchitti goes from a Formula One car to the high banks of Michigan in just one week. So congratulations to Juan Montoya and target Chip Ganassi as our Toyota spotlight takes you back throughout the run here at the Michigan 500 today. Paul Page, 
for Parker Johnstone, Gary Gerald, and Jan Vikas. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you next week at the Target Grand Prix of Chicago. ABC Sports is online at abcsports.com.